Hey guys, it's Jay from CrabProtect.com, and today we will be rooting the OnHub. Yes, we are rooting the OnHub. So now this is very exciting, well at least for me. Um, I've been waiting for something like this for the OnHub, and uh, let's get to it. The requirements are that you need a, a at least 4 gigabyte USB drive. So, you know, make sure you have that, which most of you should have anyway. And uh, let's get to it. So if you're on Windows, you can just right click and format the drive. Uh, if you're on Mac, you know, open open up Spotlight using Command S, Command Spacebar, and type up Disk Utility. Oh wow, this looks different. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it like this. I guess this is the 10.11 update with the L Captain. So, anyways, you format it, you know, name, whatever you want to name it, doesn't really matter, because once you write the image, it's going to change, but for the tutorial, sir, for the tutorial I'm just going to leave it as this, and I'm going to do it as MBR, uh, so make sure it's MBR, not GPT. Alright, so now it's formatting, mounting, and done. Wow. The UI actually looks pretty good on this guy. Hmm. Cool. Alright. So now that we have that, uh, we're going to go down to Safari. And now the exploit they have, you know, found the rooting process and, you know, they have provided a guide here. I will put this link in the description just in case you guys want to follow this and just don't care about the video because this video is just redundant but I'm doing it anyway just for you know people out there who just want a video I guess um, so if you're on Windows go ahead and grab this program Win32 Disk Imager um, I've used it it's awesome uh, when you know when you're trying to write something to a USB um, so you could just Google that up, and that first one here on SourceForge, just go ahead and click that and click download <coughs> right there, and unzip it, run it. You can see in the screenshot here, you know, you're going to select the device, and here you're going to select the ISO, so just go ahead and select the ISO or image file, and that's going to write it to your USB. Alright, so now if you're on a Mac, go ahead and download this guy, or even if you're on Windows, go ahead and download this guy right here. Google on Hub Telnet Shell Image. This guy, it's about 3.7, here I can just show you guys, 3 and 8, 3.87 gigabytes. So, it's probably going to take about 3-4 minutes, that's how long it took me. Um, so now here's the ISO image file, sorry. And we're just going to go ahead and DD that. Oh yeah, and yes, I am going to be coming up with some Python tutorials on my channel soon. So I've been writing some stuff, you know, just got two things, uh, but more to come soon. And so let's go ahead and DD that image here. So we're going to go down to Terminal. And I've got the font big enough so you guys can see it already. So we're going to go ahead and put it right sudo well wait let me get the um, the disk number first so disk util list and here it is so this is disk disk 3s1 all right so let's go ahead and do sudo and then we're going to do dd equals and wherever wherever your uh, your images so what's it, what's it called what's the name Google okay so Google Google tab and then of whoops sorry that's brain fart I knew something was wrong so of equals 
And so of is going to be your image file, and then if equals, and then you're going to type in the uh, the disk disk ID. So dev, and then disk 3s1. So here, and from here on, you're going to basically just you know put in your disk number. And once you do that. It should start writing. It's going to ask you for sudo password in my case. So I did sudo because Mac likes to complain. Okay. It's busy because I haven't unmounted it. So you could do unmount and then volumes on hub. Oops. U mount. Sorry. Speaking and typing. And then it asks for sudo again. It's kind of wow. Mac is complaining. Actually, what if I just do this? Because I don't feel like typing and going through all that stuff. There we go. Got it. That's the command I use in Linux all the time. Uh, disk util U mount does work. You know, it works the same same way, but I use that anyway. So now the disk number shouldn't change. Uh, let's go ahead and sudo that thing. And as you can see, it's writing it now. And once this is written, the cursor is going to stop. And you're going to see Jasmine's Mac Pro here. That's when you know that it's done. It's just going to stop. Wow, I guess that's a new feature in 10.11 too. If you shake the mouse, it, it, uh, wow, that's kind of cool, but annoying at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bug, uh, cause this is a Hackintosh or what the hell, but, uh, so look at that. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna come back and, uh, resume this video once this, once this is done. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, plug it up in the OnHub and show you how to take out the, uh, Screw and flip the developer switch.
during the video I forgot to press the developer switch so after the two beeps just go ahead and press the developer switch if you're having trouble trying to get a static purple light meaning it's not blinking anymore um, and you should see that the USB if it has a light it should be blinking so if it's blinking then you're fine if not just go ahead and press the developer switch um, yeah so whatever um, once you get there and the other way that you could check is on the, your Wi-Fi networks you're gonna see a setup 99c2 or whatever your network name that they gave you that's on the bottom of your on hub the sticker they're gonna have a network name or SSID and just make sure that, that shows up and you can connect to that your your network that you set up that's not gonna come up so once you like when you set up your on hub if you did you're gonna have a network name that you specified that's not gonna come up because you're using the developer ISO or image you're booting off the developer image so it's just gonna boot up the default settings so that's why. So go ahead and connect to this if you're going to do Wi-Fi and enter in the password or connect to Ethernet. And also in the video, I'm, my router my router is in the other side of the of the house where my computer's not close to me and I didn't have an adequate place to actually record at that time, so it's on the so I didn't have a uh, Ethernet cable plugged into it hopefully that clears up some some misunderstandings um, so once you're connected to the network and you connect to it go ahead and ping 192.168.86.1 now now that you're getting a response that means that you that you are connected and you can SSH and you can do SSH root at 192.168.86.86.1 and then you put in the password, passwords on hub okay so now you're SSH into the uh, on hub now this is for Linux and Mac uh, if you're on Windows then go ahead and download PuTTY You can use this, and you can SSH to there. See if they got any screenshots. No, they don't. So images. All right. So here. So when you open up Putty, this is what you're gonna see, and you can put in the IP address here. Just put in that IP address: 192.168.86.1 and the, leave the port as is and just click open make sure it's SSH and then just put in the password now one other thing I'm gonna give you guys a link to the auto root file that I created it's on github and the reason why I created it is so that we don't have to exactly type in or copy these one line by line and enter them into the console I didn't want to do that so later on I will go ahead and repack the image and put this in the init so it'll start up and it'll automatically root it but I don't want to risk you know crashing your on hub so now that, we're, now that we've SSH in here, we're going to do bash, bring up the bash console, and go ahead and do curl, dash O, capital O, and then paste the, the link that's on there. okay so right here it so there it is there's the file and it's here so now for just just in case 
that you can't you can't copy the file there or it won't download there it'll give you an error switch over and CD to TMP and then run that same command again and then it should work so for my case it works so. now here we're just going to do sudo bash auto root and it's just going to run and it's going to copy everything and it's going to do everything and, and you're done once this is done you're done that's it you've now rooted your on hub and you're ready to go unfortunately for my case I'm having a bit of an error here it says error write protection switch is, or write protection is still enabled so I need to figure out where this is or maybe it was a update problem because as soon as I got my on hub it updated itself so that could be a problem but if you guys are having the same problem then let me know you know it could be something that I'm missing because Maximus from the exploities you know he actually did it and it worked on his so I'm not sure if he actually updated his on hub or not I've been bugging him for an answer I haven't got one yet but so this is how you root it and if you if if this worked for you you should be getting output like this it's the uh, exploities Google on hub there we go so you should be getting a this right here so reading system live firmware it could be possible that my USB is locked you know it's right protected but I'm not sure so we'll see about that but anyways you guys now have a rooted on hub and that's it and just in case that there's a problem and you guys corrupted your file system and you guys can't boot back up after doing this check out my other video on YouTube I'll show you I'm actually in the wrong account right now I think yeah um, oh there's the channel uh, videos and this one the how to unroot restore stock firmware this is gonna tell you how to do all that and once this is and once you're done like this and just type in halt enter and then it'll reboot and if you get a purple light just go ahead and press spacebar and enter spacebar enter spacebar enter spacebar enter and that'll get you out of developer mode if you guys need if you guys need any more help just comment or send me a message and I'll be glad to help you guys all right thank you sorry for taking too much of your time but you know hopefully this worked for you all right guys